In this video, I'm going to show you how to make some very simple sun prints using this sun art paper kit. So this is something ages six and up. You can use this safely with children. There's no chemicals to mix, and it's easy to buy one of these packs ready to use on Amazon. So the first thing I'll be using is a sun art paper kit. And in this kit, you get 12 five by seven sheets and a piece of clear acetate to put over your work when you take it outside. I'm going to also have an old piece of cardboard that I'll be laying my work on so that I can carry it outside easily. And the other things you'll need are just the objects that you want to make your sun print out of. So I went outside and I just walked around the yard and with a pair of scissors and I cut some cedar branches from one of our cedar trees and a couple fern fronds from my garden. Things that have interesting texture. There's another cedar branch. Um, I have some dried, I don't even know what they are anymore, some dried flowers in my garden and I took some of those and some lavender. And then you, if you don't have anything, you know, you're doing this at a time when you don't have anything growing or you know where you can do that, this is an artificial stem um, that you can use as well. In addition to natural materials like these, some other things that you can use, anything that will cover your paper and not allow the sun to pass through or allow less sun to pass through is going to work. So I have some shells that I gathered at the beach and what you wanna do is, if you're doing shells, you wanna look for some interesting shapes along the edges because these shapes and patterns are not going to show up in a sun print. So this has these little tooth-like things on it and I've got some interesting shapes. Um, you can also just cut a piece of wire. This is just some aluminum wire from the hardware store. And you can just cut that with a pair of your garage pliers cuts very very easily and this can be fun you can curl this into shapes um, this one is, looks a little bit like a flower but you can curl it into spirals or a variety of shapes and you can even take those to a hard surface with a hammer and hammer them flat like I did here with this piece that's I shaped into a heart and a little swirl, and then I hammered it flat so that it lays totally flat. Another thing that you can use for sun prints um, are stencils. And these are just some stencils that I pulled from uh, my crafting supplies. One thing that I have learned with stencils is that if your stencil is like this newer one that's still in its pack, you're going to find that it's kind of translucent. So it does let some sunlight in. And I'll do a demonstration to show you the difference between a new stencil, like this one here, that's somewhat translucent. You can see a little bit through even the white part. And other stencils that I've used many times that have acrylic paint on them so that they're blocking the light a little bit differently. So those are the main things that you need to work with. You need your sun print paper. You need some cardboard or a surface to lay your paper on. Your sun print paper has everything you need, and then the objects that you want to use. The only thing you're going to need along with this is a pan of water and a place for drying. So I'm going to take you outside onto my patio and show you how I set that up. Okay, we're outside, which means you can probably hear my neighbor cutting his grass. But what I have is a small pan. It's probably, oh, maybe a 12 or 14 inch by 10 inch pan filled almost to the top with clean water, and then an old towel next to it for laying my papers to dry. If you're going to use, do a lot of these cyanotypes or sun prints, you're going to want to have a larger tub or be very close to your water source, because when your water turns color, you're going to need to dump it out and get some fresh water. The good news is the water that comes from this is totally safe to use. I usually just dump it in my flower beds to water the garden or in the grass if I have some dry spots. So it's perfectly safe. Okay, right now I'm in a room that's as darkened as I can get it on a bright sunshiny summer day. 
The ideal time to do cyanotypes or sun prints is when the sun is high in the sky. A cloudless day is best, but if you don't have that, any bright sunny day will do. Your work will go much faster and your blues will be a little more intense if you do that. The catch is when you set this up, you need to be indoors where you have a darkened room. Now right now my room is a little brighter than ideal just because there is light coming through my shades. I didn't put the darkening part down so that I could take good video for you to see. But you want your room, you want to be able to see, but you want your room to be darkened so your paper's not exposed to unnecessary light. When you open up your sun print kit, you'll find two things. There'll be a small piece of acrylic that will be used to put on top of your piece to take it outside, and a black plastic pouch that has your paper. And the catch is you don't want your paper exposed to light, so you're going to carefully reach in and pull out just one sheet, so I'm kind of checking with my fingers to make sure I have one. One side is white and the other side is blue. The blue side is the side you're going to use. Okay, lay your fern or other object on the blue side of the paper. Cover it with the acrylic piece and you're ready to take it outside and expose it to the sunlight. For this video part, I'm using a voiceover because my neighbor is still mowing his lawn and it's going to make it too difficult for you to hear what I'm saying. But I'm taking this outside it's going directly into full sun. Right now it's about two in the afternoon on an early September day. The sun is high in the sky and it's a cloudless day. So this is a really good day for a fast sun print exposure. This is not going to take long, so we're going to watch this first one in real time so that you can see how this works. At first you won't notice it and then all of a sudden you'll notice that that blue begins to fade and become lighter and lighter. This is why I like to use a white cardboard background or a white piece of poster board because it does allow me to see very easily the contrast between the blue and the white so that I can watch the blue lighten. If you use it on a darker color, sometimes it's a little harder to judge when that's occurring. But what you're looking for is a very, very pale blue. Once it reaches that very, very pale blue stage, you know that it's ready to put in the water bath so that you can fix the color process and get the print made. So right now I'm gonna bring you in close. You can see that some areas look a little whiter than others. That's normal, that's part of the process. And you can also tell that it's lightening. I can see that it looks very white closer to the leaves and then a little more blue as it goes to the edges of the paper. It's just the way the paper is turning. So as it gets lighter and lighter, I'm watching. And right now you can see that it's very light, very pale. You can especially see that on the edge of the paper that's sticking out below the acrylic piece. So it's very light. Now I'm taking it into the shade, which is where I have my water bath set up. When I first remove the acrylic sheet, and the fern, you'll notice that the fern is a very dark blue and the background is white. But what makes this process so fascinating is that there is going to be a change that takes place in the water bath. And you're going to see that color contrast flip and your fern will become the white image and your background will become the blue. Kids love to watch this happen. It's just like magic and it's so much fun. So it's part of that process of creating a cyanotype, which was actually what the way blueprints were made um, back in the past before all of our technology made us do things very differently. So it's just an old photographic process that's really fun to see. I'm going to swish it around in the water just for a minute or two to fix those colors, rinse off any remaining chemical, and lay it flat on my towel to dry. The color blue will darken as the paper dries. Just keep it in a shaded area and allow it to dry. Okay, now I've got, got my paper again. And for this one, I'm going to use those shells. And with this one, we won't be using the acrylic plastic piece. We're just going to use this and I'm just going to arrange my shells 
in just random little arrangement of shells. Because this will be just to see what shells will do. You can see that there's a lot of different shapes going on here. Oops, sorry, hit that. All right, and this is going to stay just like this. Now, these are heavy enough that they'll probably stay down just fine even if the day is a little breezy. If you're using three-dimensional objects and it's a lightweight object, this could be a problem. So I highly recommend a bright, sunshiny day that also has very little wind and then things won't move around as much. But we're gonna leave this and take this out to the yard. Okay, now we're outside in the full sun with the shells. You can see a little bit of movement. That's just me as I'm carrying it over to where I'm going to set it down. Put it up here. And we'll watch again. And what you'll notice when you have three-dimensional objects are the shadows that are being cast by those objects. That is going to make for some very interesting parts to your image that ends up being printed because those shadows will also cast areas that create color changes. So the fun thing with three-dimensional objects is that you're going to get more than a white and a blue. You're going to get some in-between shades of blue where those shadows were cast. And again, you can see that this process is occurring very quickly. We're out in that very bright sun, and it's really only going to be a matter of one or two minutes before that paper is ready to go back in the shade and be placed into the water bath. looks very light so I'm going to pick it up and very carefully move over while I'm in the Sun moving to the shaded area I'm going to want to be very careful not to allow those objects to move too much there'll be some movement it's inevitable but now you can already see where those shadows were cast making that difference in color I'm going to flip the shells off there you go you see they're dark put them in the water Swish it around gently. And again, swish for two or three minutes. It doesn't take long, but what we want to do is remove any excess chemical that's still on there and set the color that's going to remain. And one nice thing about this particular brand of sunprint paper is that it seems to be quite sturdy even while it's wet. Look at those gorgeous sh shadows that you get. It makes such an interesting print. And what, not, what is nice is that when children are doing this, there's less likelihood that they're going to tear it or poke their fingers through it. I've done sun prints using other brands and also using papers that I've put the chemical on myself. And sometimes you have to be very careful. Some papers are much more fragile in the water and much more easily torn. And I really think this brand does a good job of not letting that happen. You can see we have some really nice color contrast. I'm going to gently shake the water off and lay this one to dry. And you can already see that it makes for some very interesting effects. And there's our original fern. You can see that that one, the blue, is definitely getting darker. And it's a really lovely shade of a, a sort of a teal cobalt blue. Very pretty. Okay, I'm going to show you some things that can be done with stencils. This first image that I'm exposing is a brand new stencil, so there's no paint to interfere with the sunlight. This means that there is full sunlight on the stars and the two edges, and there's partial sunlight getting through the white part of the plastic image. So I'm exposing it the same way I expose the others, but what you're going to see once it's been washed out is that there's less color contrast between the stars and the background. So if you have a new stencil or a stencil that's totally cleaned off, you're not going to have a big difference. I'm not going to go through the washing process, but I'm just going to show you the results after the paper was completely dry. You can see here that the stars are dark, but there's also a dark blue background around them. This is a stencil that was completely covered with acrylic paint from many times of use. You can see that there's a much sharper contrast between the parts that were exposed to the sun 
the birds and the branches, and the background that was covered by a stencil that had been painted over very thickly with acrylic paint. So by having paint on your stencils, you can eliminate that problem that's caused by too much sunlight going through the background of the stencil. So I highly recommend acrylic paint if you want that effect. This last stencil is a paper stencil. It's a very thick, heavy paper. Um, I have used it. You can see that it's been painted over many times. So I'm going to demonstrate here that a very thick paper type stencil or a very thick, heavily colored stencil of any kind is going to, again, not allow too much light to go through. So you're going to get a stronger image. And the only problem I ran into with this particular stencil is that when I put the acrylic piece over it, it kept popping back up. The stencil, because it was basically a cardboard stencil, had bowed or buckled a little bit from constant use. So what I've done here, you'll see I've taken some, just some basic clear tape, and I'm taping down the corners of the acrylic so that it lies flatter against the stencil and that will help to eliminate any problems with sunlight getting underneath and creating those double shadows like you saw on the shell prints. And here's one last one just to share with you the results of the cedar branch that I did. I just think branches like this, pine branches, cedar branches, they can make such lovely prints because they're very lacy. Um, you get a little bit of shadow because they're three-dimensional, and yet you get a lot of really pretty lacy effect that can make for a beautiful print. So just one more idea for things that you can do when you're creating sun prints. When your sun prints are dry, they, the paper is a little bit thin, so they might be curled up in places. Here's the fern. I did a cedar branch, the game day stencil, the bird stencil, the seashells, and the star stencil that came out lighter since it was the unpainted stencil and the light got through more. They'll be a little bit curled up. What I do is simply flatten them out between the pages of a book and some magazines and stack them in a stack for a day or two and they'll flatten right out. If you have trouble with them flattening, you can also take a spray and just lightly spray a little water on them and then weight them down, but you'll want to do that individually so they don't stick together. And there you have it. Simple sun prints. If you'd like to learn more about cyanotype printing, and especially how you can mix your own chemicals in order to control not only the materials that you work on, but also the shape that you work in, I have a class on a website called Skillshare where I teach some of the simple basics of mixing your own chemicals. It's a simple, easy to use kit. You can apply this to fabric or all different kinds of paper. So if you wanna check out Harness the Power of the Sun, cyanotype printmaking on my Skillshare channel, there'll be a link posted below this video that you can click on and check it out.